Welcome to another Tourpreneur Roundup episode. I am here with my partners in crime, Chris Torres and Peter Syme. A couple of weeks ago, I put up on our Facebook group a question. If you could describe 2022 in one word, what would it be? The answers I got were return, demanding, validating, topsy-turvy, easy, epic, odd, normalizing, experiences, tumultuous, over it, (laughs) unforgettable, over it, (laughs) unexpected, resilient, disappointing, transitional, frustrating, I could go on. We got a hundred responses. Pete, do you have a word that pops into your head about 2022? One word. I'll give you two words. Same, same. When you get to my age, it's just another year. Another one done. Same, same. Chris? Uh, yeah, for me, I posted up outstanding. For me, it was uh, an outstanding year, especially coming off the back of the pandemic. No. Well, the agency had a great year, Tourpreneur taking over that has been great with all the stuff we've been doing with that. So for me, it's been quite an outstanding year, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's funny because you see polar extremes. I omitted the like seven responses that were just swear words. <laughs> and you see operators were all over the board with busyness, mm-hmm. with nothing yet. Uh, and, I, and, and for that reason, I don't know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I hate end of year encapsulations of trends and things that try to sum up our industry in a neat little list. And it's because our list is, is, is endless. Everybody is in different regions, different cities, different places, experiencing their business and the relationship to the world in different ways. Pete, you ended the year with a list of untrends. And the top of it was about artificial intelligence. This was a late arrival into the year. Uh, but it really came on in full force. What are your What are your very quick thoughts about all these discussions that are suddenly happening with tour operators around this issue? Uh, every time a new technology comes along, it gets overhyped in the extreme, and if everybody's the majority of operators are thinking this is new technology. The only thing I'd like to emphasize: it's not new. It's been around since the nineteen fifties. John McCarthy. AI started in 1954, if I remember correctly. So this has been a long time coming, and it's had peaks and troughs. It's had some false dawns. But this time, it's the real deal. This is breaking through when individuals, people, the public, general small businesses can actually see the use. Artificial intelligence is in your daily life anyway. It's like electricity. You just do not know it's there. But now you can see it's there and you can see the very, very beginnings of what it can do. We are only at baby steps. Chat GPT and stuff that's been done, all the mid journey, all of this stuff is baby steps. You've got to be thinking well ahead on this because this is a once in a lifetime change. It's like when the internet came along. It was like when electricity came along over 100 years ago, when motor cars came along. This is a step change an industrial society as a whole, not just travel and tourism, obviously. This is a society level change. Every single tour operator in our groups, business is going to change between because of this. And I've sorry grafted out on some of the programs we're building, a traffic light system, green, amber, red, and I'm placing different types of tour operating verticals against green, amber, red. Everyone's going to have to do something. But if you're in the red zone, you've got a lot to do. If you're in the green zone, you've got stuff to do, but not as much as someone's in the red zone. And obviously, Amber's in between. But every single operator, no matter what your experience is, has got actions to do on the back of this. I would say to add to that, that not only is it overhyped, which everything is, you, you, you see a sudden onslaught of reactions and excitement and articles and everything. I would say to operators out there, Also be nervous about reactions inside of you that are dismissive because that's an emotional reaction to say this won't change anything. I have seen so and heard so many people also say, you know, my job gets done with handshakes, with business relationships, by meeting real people. Nothing will replace the human experience. These types of canned reactions are reactions. They're also not the, they're, they're, that's also going to change. It's going to change drastically because I will say this as somebody that has been in the experiences and human experiences business for 22 years as a tour guide and as a frontline operator, 
yes, it will replace a lot of human experience <laughs> as our phones have, as me in New York City ordering my meal uh, and getting it delivered has. Digitally delivered experiences at scale are really easy to accomplish in the world now. And it's gonna, it's already here at the experiences industry, even if we don't quite see it yet. And it has replaced a lot of human interaction. Even if we did like, knowing the names of people and meeting people beforehand. To me, it means your experience needs to be as human as humanly possible, but at least at a minimum, you also have to have a digital strategy for moving your business into this new space. And for me, part of that is thinking of this, not in terms that it seems to be thinking about right now, which is it's marketing content, but in terms of an upheaval of the way knowledge is delivered and generated. Uh, this is a knowledge revolution. I think this is a I'm this is a printing press type revolution in, in our relationship with the body of what humans know. And if you're in the knowledge industry, which in some ways we are, just expect that that price point is going to drop to zero um, for what you know. But what's not going to drop to zero cost is how you can connect with people and make them feel, but that's got to be different than delivering knowledge. Chris, lots of reactions in terms of artificially generated content. That seems to be where a lot of people have gone very quickly. Oh my God, it can write my blog post. It can write my website. What are you seeing as an agency owner? Um, quite interesting, actually. We've been um, sort of playing around with the sort of AI gen content generators for a while, Jasper and other things, and then obviously G uh, GPT came out and... It's the best one I've seen so far, um, so much so that um, uh, for my own agency in the, in the next few weeks, we're actually going to be implementing some of that within our own packages, um, not as a replacement for content, but as an addition. We've actually seen some big boosts in terms of things like SEO and, and, and rankings and things. That was some of the tests that we've run. But you do need to have that human element over it to check all the content. You do need to just run it through other tools as well. And we're going to be showing that in a, a sprint coming up that we're producing, that you, you have to use other tools to get the best out of it. And so Google doesn't see it as AI-generated content. You're not, it's not seen as a plagiarism. Uh, it's a copy of something else. So there's various things you have to do and, and learn with Chat GPT to get the most out of it. But in terms of... Um, well, you guys talking about the, the people worried about taking away the, the they prefer to have the handshake and talk to a person face to face and, and that that side of things. I actually see uh, it will actually help with that in the future. You now, if you've got your AI connected to a CRM system and connected to social media and whatever else it would could be connected to, pulling in information about your own customers to give you the best data to then present to that customer, make things more personalized for that customer. To me, that's just going to evaluate uh, and sort of make, make the, the experience for that customer so much more better. Um, so to me, I'm actually really excited about it from, yes, a marketing standpoint, content standpoint, and all that can entail to make you know, you, you, your sales part, part of the process of your business better. But in terms of delivering your experiences to your customer, whether that's a digital experience or an in-person experience, I can actually see things in the future that's actually going to elevate that a lot more uh, and just make it easier for the customer in the long run. So uh, I'm actually very excited about it. Speaking of content at Tourpreneur, we have a lot of it coming up. Don't worry, this won't be the last that we address this important topic of artificial intelligence. Uh, that was just a teaser conversation. We've got an entire course that we are um, preparing to launch in January around this that will be constantly updated with not only tools, but also industry implications for you as an experienced creator. But speaking of content, we have a lot of it coming up in Tourpreneur in 2023. With the new year, we've got a couple of virtual events already uh, uh, taking place very soon. Pete, do you want to tell us about what's up for our tour technology demo days? Yeah, next week we have resellers, OTAs and resellers. So if you're a tourpreneur and you want to sell more, which I suspect all of you do, <laughs> next week is the one you need to attend. So we have 18 resellers and OTAs pitching for seven minutes on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, they'll be in the demo rooms, demo on the platform, having one-to-one -one conversations with you, answering all your queries. But one of the biggest questions we get, or the most asked questions we get inside the group all the time, is where can I sell my tours? Well, these are the guys who can sell your tours. So make sure you turn up to see the pitches, attend the demos. We've got 18 on this batch, but throughout the year of 2023, 
we're going to end up with over 100 resellers that will be put in front of you so you can have no excuses of not finding places to sell your tours. I think these demo days have surprised me most by the variety of what's out there. I think people think they know the OTA and reseller landscape. That's, uh, you know, Viator, Get Your Guide, Kluke, all of these sort of big names. But there's so many niche OTAs and so many different ways in which even being a reseller uh, works. It's not simply just a bunch of tours listed on a big general platform. And what I'm excited about is uh, for these other companies to also share the way in which they operate. These resellers and OTAs are going to be part of one of our six new giant directories that are being launched starting this week. Uh, our OTA reseller directory is going to be searchable and filterable according to where you are, the kind of business you are, and it's going to help you figure out exactly the kinds of partners that make sense for your business. Our OTA reseller directory is uh, launching along with a travel technology software directory. Again, booking software, itinerary software, mapping software, guest experience software, all of these websites and platforms and apps that can move your guest experience and your tour creation and your sales, your sales and booking forward are going to be listed in one place where you can filter according to their features, according to your needs to figure out exactly the right solutions for your business. We've got a book recommendation directory already launched. You can go in there, post books that have uh, transformed your business and see the books that other people have loved. And we've also got a couple of directories that I'm really excited about in particular. Number one, the green list. That's our name for our vetted service provider directory in which you can go and look for a graphic designer or a marketing agency like Chris or an angry Scottish man to yell at you like Peter uh, for money or um, uh, uh, somebody that does admin work for you or website design. All of the things that you need as a business owner, you can be found on our green list and they are vetted when they submit uh, actual tour operators that they've worked with that, that like them to make sure that you are getting people that have experience. Also, we have a fantastic directory for buying and selling a tour business. This is something that Peter last year had a fantastic podcast with uh, Trish Higgins on from Chenmark. They're in the business of businesses. And Trish has created a course that's going to be offered for free uh, to go along with that on what to think about and consider when you're buying and selling a tour business. All of those directories are free. They're all on uh, the Tourpreneur uh website at tourpreneur.com. They're just resources there to help you understand who's out there in this industry ecosystem that can be of service to you and your business. And finally, my favorite thing above all, of course, because my favorite thing is tour operators, is the tour operator world map. It's going to be a partner directory where you can go and see other tourpreneur members and connect with them when you need a local service provider on the ground. Or you're going, um, uh, you have a partner that is interested in doing a tour that you can't operate, make an affiliate or a certain business relationship with another partner. All of those things are going to be facilitated with our operator world map to bring our community closer and tighter together and also more valuable for each other. All right, that's a lot on the directory front. Chris, what do we have coming up just to wrap up uh, in the world of Tour Printer Plus and everything else? Yeah, well, obviously, um, this month and the coming months, we have our huddles, which I'm really looking forward to. So we've got our Charleston huddle, um, where we're going to be uh, conducting workshops and advice with uh, a slight few sort of operators, about 12 or so operators, um, deep diving into their business, going into their numbers, their figures. And they guys are going to be leaving with actionable points they'll be doing during the workshops and during all the, the advice that we give them and afterwards as well. So we've got the one in Charleston in January. We've got uh, Portugal in February. Uh, and those are those two are going to be uh, good testing grounds to sort of see how this all works, what we can do for future huddles going forward. So the huddles is this thing that when we took over to it was one of the first things we thought that this we could offer value with and we're actually meeting operators face to face and deep diving into their business. And uh, yeah, that's really what I'm looking forward to. So that in uh, January and February. So yeah. 
just the start of a really, uh, really big plans for these types of small group in person experiential learning uh, opportunities uh, to gather and in person just makes makes serendipity happen. We have our first shindig of the year on January 24th in Austin, Texas, with a local operator partner uh, and with Don Littlefield of Bruce Cruz and Trip School. Uh, that's going to be hosting an evening of just drinks and gathering and networking in Austin, Texas. So I'm excited again to get those in-person shindigs off and running. We did about 20 of them last year in the last half of 2022. There were some of my um, funnest i won't say uh memorable evenings because a lot of them i don't remember but peter beyond that um just looking ahead for tourpreneur and our thoughts on the future um what are your thoughts about where where all of this is headed uh, well what's the reason we started doing this it's to make operators more profitable simple straightforward if we can make operators more profitable then we have we have a role to play uh the operating landscape environment is not getting simpler. It's getting more complex. Technology is making it more complex. World situations making it more complex. So operators are actually in a world that is more complex than it was five years ago and it was 10 years ago. But our role is to make the operators more profitable. We can do a lot of that digitally and we are going to do it. But as we discovered last year, the more we actually meet people face to face, the more time we spend on the road, the more time we spend delivering face-to-face, -face, right, we have the biggest impact face-to-face. -face, and that, that's just human nature when you're sitting down with small groups or people. That is where the real impact can, can happen. And plus, we know what it's like when you're teaching. We're all teachers in a way. You can tell people what to do, but then they go away and they don't do it, which drives me up the wall. When you're going to a huddle or we're meeting you face-to-face, -face, that's not going to happen. We're, not, we're going to agree what gets done and it will get done there. We'll be looking over then, your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Then three months, three months after it, we want to get the results from you of the actions that were carried out at the huddle. So uh, it's more, so kind of summarise that, 2023 is more about getting the membership and getting the operators to action, not just listen, not just research, not just read, but take actions that's going to make the businesses more prof profitable. I remember, Pete, you posted the first time in our Facebook group about the huddles and uh, I got a direct message. Somebody said, hey, Mitch, the huddle sounds really good, but it sounds really scary. Is it going to be as scary as Peter just made it sound? And uh, I said, well, yes, but in a good way, because that that pain is how you grow. And some of the pain is opening up the pricing spreadsheet in public, uh, in private, but in public and, and, and shedding some real light on it, uh, doing the same thing with every aspect of your business, but doing it experientially at the same time as all of that hard, difficult work, we're going to be doing it with local on the ground operators that are providing experiences with things that are happening in our beach houses on the beach, uh, local tours provided by people like John Laverne from Bulldog Tours and um, Forrest Parker of Undiscovered Charleston, award-winning culinary experiences. Listen, everything's an experience and experiences are meant to grow you and tug at you emotionally from all different sides. And I think what I'm excited about is just how challenging but also rewarding uh, these, are, these are going to be and they're just going to be the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what, what, what I'm really excited about as well is, you know, if people think, I think you posted up the, the, the post, Mitch, of everything that we've done in the last six months with all the content and everything else can fill close to a 400-page book, um, which I thought was incredible. And that's just a tip of iceberg of what we're going to be doing in 2023. So um, I hope hope some people out there can be our uh, encyclopedia uh, door salesman can take our <laughs> content around because it's uh, what we've got planned is going to be a hell of a lot more than what we've just done in the last six months. You're going to see some new voice. Oh, yeah, Peter. Yeah, the world's got a lot faster and it's going to continue to get a lot faster because of AI, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a community of really great people who run really great experiences, but there is a tendency to do things in slow time and overthink everything and really put so much thought and time. Again, I'm, again, I'm just off a call previous to this one with another operator, a year developing a tour and developing an experience. And these things in this world need to get done quickly. You need to get in the market quickly. You need to find out. You need to change your pricing quickly. Or if it's wrong, you go and change it again. 
we need to start creating a culture of getting things done in a much quicker fashion because the world is moving at, at speed now. And it, and, and it really is. I mean, I'm not known for my empathy, but I can guarantee in 2023 I'm going to have a lot less because if you want to make money, there is rules to making money. It is actually quite simple. And, and you've just got to carry out the actions in 2023 back to do the actions. If you like that kind of advice, you should join Tourpreneur Plus because uh, Chris and Peter are now off to lead their small group coaching sessions on business strategy and on marketing. Um, and so we're going to wrap it up there and just say that, again, we're hugely and deeply appreciative of everybody in the Tourpreneur community. We build in public. We do not overthink things. We barely think things. We just do. And we're doing it in community with you. A lot of what we do just comes from your suggestions. So drop us a line at hello at Tourpreneur.com or DM any of us or Mitch or Peter or Chris at Tourpreneur.com. And all of us are open to anybody's thoughts, criticisms, suggestions, even compliments. And uh, with that, we're going to build something and continue to grow it uh, in, in a way that, that is valuable for you all out there. So thanks for listening. Here's to a bright and wonderful 2023.